I've collaborated with Chalmers Gems. They've given me the most beautiful beads. There's abalone inlay wood beads and crazy agate, and I've done a chakra chain. Um, this is to make spectacle chains, chains for your eyeglasses, to make them decorative and interesting. They make lovely gifts, they're great to wear. And the first project is going to be showing you how to make this yin yang linking system. Do you see the, uh, it's a wire system um, and it's really pretty and it goes beautifully with these stunning beads or gem beads uh, that I've got. The other idea is these crazy agate beads. They're sort of matted, they're beautiful, they're all slightly different colors. And then the last chain idea is chakra um, gemstones, gemstone colors uh, put on a chain. So those are my three projects to inspire you. The first one is this abalone wood inlay beaded chain. And I want to show you how to create the little wire connectors. So um, you can get these stunning um, abalone, as I say, inlay wood. I've never seen anything like this. They're sort of like the uh, the evil eye, you know, where it's it sort of shines through and as they catch the light they really are stunning. And they're very, very light because they're wood and shells, so it's excellent for what we're going to make. So I've cut some lengths. This is really depending how big you want to make these chain lengths, about three and a half inches or so. Um, but really that's up to you. And I'm going to use my round nose pliers, place them roughly in the middle of each length, and then bend the wire round one side of the pliers and then on the other side as well to get this sort of yin yang sort of uh, motif. So you bend them around and then once you've got that swirl or that S sort of motif, then you can take them off the pliers and then you'll use your flat nose pliers to carry on curling the wire around the contour. Um, so pick up one wire and curl it to the next one and then push the next one around. So you're just basically going around the outer edges until they land up on opposite sides of that oval frame. Um, you'll never get it quite even, so you should have enough to make, you don't have, I've got a bit too much on one side, but it really doesn't matter. So we want to make links now on each end so that we can link all these things together. So use your round nose pliers, pick up the very end, and just keep curling it around the pliers until it reaches the top of your connector or your chain link. And then this one is a bit longer, so just keep curling it and curling it and curling it until again it reaches the place that you want it to be at the opposite side. So there's your link on the opposite side. So now all you have to do is remove the excess wire that was curled. So any excess, just snip it off, get your snips right in there. And there's how you make each of the chain links. So you're gonna do that to each and every one and create the length of eyeglass chain or spectacle chain that you particularly want. Usually I'm, I would say 22 inches to 24 inches is an ideal length. So I am gonna hammer these just to work hard on them. Um, it just, you know, makes for, um, a longer wear and tear of the chain and the connectors. So each link is created like that. So you'll just repeat this method for each of the little units and then you'll link them together with the bead, the wooden bead. So all you do for that is uh, thread each bead, make a right angle, bring the wire around your round nose pliers to create a central link, remove it from the rest of the wire, and then once again, you're going to 
bend to a right angle, pick up the end, and bring the wire around the round nose pliers to create the link on the other side. And make sure each of those links are running in the same direction. And then you just open the link sideways and you will just connect it with the chain link that you've made and in it goes, close it up again nice and firm. And then you continue doing this to create the beautiful chain. And so this also works obviously for necklaces, for earrings, and then to connect it to your spectacle connectors, which are just a piece of rubber. You can buy these online. And um, they're, they're the, the pieces, the connectors for the actual glasses. So just open a jump ring, link into either the last bead or the chain link, and then straight into the end of the connector. And then I would sort of just wiggle that jump ring backwards and forwards a little bit and that work hardens it because we can't solder this so just a you know a little bit of backwards and forwards wiggling to make sure that it's really tightly closed and it cannot be tugged open in any way so that's how you create this sort of chain link system and as i say you can use it for other jewelry as well you can make it for necklaces and earrings and it really does look attractive with this particular bead. My next variation, if you're interested, is the crazy agate with the wire coils in between. These are spacer coils and then again you need those spectacle ends, the rubber ends, to hook onto your um, eyeglasses. Um, so these are made by coiling the wire. So you can pick up the wire on your round nose pliers and just keep wrapping it under on the same spot of the pliers. It's just like making jump rings but much smaller. So you just keep coiling it and as you're coiling it it just pushes itself up but it remains the same size. So that's how you make even sized coils. So you can make them all by hand with your round nose pliers. Each one can be coiled like this and just go round and round. Always make sure that you're coiling, um, you know, the wire is coiling under itself so it doesn't become tapered around the, the mandrel of the tapered round nose pliers. Um, there is another way that is much speedier, only if you already have it. So if you have um, a wire gizmo, which is a coiling gizmo, you can buy these online or from any a good beading shop or um, you know a bead supplier so you can actually connect that to your table and it comes with these rods and handles that you can wrap the wire around and so you're just wrapping long 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 coils um, and this is 0 0.8 of a millimeter wire um, of course you can make it with thinner wire you can make it with colored wires you can really vary this every time. I'm just using silver because I like wearing silver. And you can create these long, long coils and then you can snip them into segments. So this saves you an awful lot of time with this coiling gizmo. Um, so you just snip off the segments, but obviously the segments need a little bit of um, fixing too because they'll have uh, sticking out ends so you'll have to go back once you've snipped them off you need to go back to each and every one of them and just make sure that the ends are nice and neat and you just neaten up the spikes or any uneven unsightly bits so it's just a question of going back to each one but it is a lot faster than um, probably making them you know, and also you get a very, very even coil this way. So that's a quick way of doing them if you have the coiling gizmo. So once you've made all those little um, coil spacers, you're going to get some um, threading or beading nylon. This is basically um, that 
uh, these are crimps as well. So these are wire crimps, one millimeter wire crimps, silver crimps. And you'll need the nylon filament, which is just basically fishing line. So the crimps are tiny. You can see just a little circle of wire. But those are essential for um, securing everything. So what you'll do is you'll thread it onto your 0.5 or whatever nylon fishing line or whatever nylon filament you have and thread it back through the end of your connector and through back through the crimp, the little crimp bead. And then once it's where you want it, you squeeze that down, which secures and closes up the nylon thread at that place. So it's fastened there. And then you can cut to the length um, of nylon that you need, say it's you know 26 inches, because you'll need to have extra for the end. And then you just start threading. So this is very simple. You just thread each of the crazy agate beads. They're absolutely beautiful. These are from Chalmers Gems, as I said. And they just alternate with your wire coils. So these just space out these stunning um, matted um, agate beads and it really sets them off because each one is slightly different, has a slightly different tone or a marbling effect on it and um, it really makes them stand out. So you're just going to be alternatively threading a bead a wire coil, a bead, a wire coil, and so forth, to create the chain. And then you will end by, you could put a jump ring into the end of the connector, or you go straight in with your crimp and your nylon. So I'll leave that to you. But these make beautiful and lovely glasses chains. And the third idea is the chakra gemstone chain, which really is, again, you just need some chain, you need the connectors, you'll need some, so here's the chain I've used, it's just a, a, a chunkier trace chain, um, but it could be any chain you have to hand. And um, I'm using the nylon filament again, it's uh, uh, for these chakra beads, so I've picked out the different colored chakra gemstones and I've interspersed them with little glass beads so you can use any glass beads you have to hand seed beads in between to set them off again and you can put them in the sort of chakra order um, and uh, have those as a bit of a decorative effect on the chain and you can you can put these anywhere along the chain uh, these obviously hang down near the front but you could put them nearer the front, front, it's just up to you. So again, this is about uh, 23, 22, 23 inches in all, um, but the length is up to you. So I hope you've enjoyed the three different tutorials and you'll find one that you can adapt.